My name is Susan Jeremy. My story, I'll Take You to Your Seat, Then Hide, is being performed by actress Zoe Anastasiu. I'm going to be a famous actress, and I'm doing everything I should to make that happen. I study acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts every morning to early afternoon. Then I roller skate up Madison Avenue to Radio City Music Hall where I'm an usher from 2 to 10 p.m. There are about 50 of us ushers. We wear tan blazers with matching tan skirts or pants. We resemble curtains. <laughs> we start each shift uh, with a meeting on the great staircase under the gold-plated ceiling with the largest chandelier in the world. There we get our assignments for the evening. Hector, my co-worker, nicknames me Clown because while we wait for the meeting to start, I imitate people working there. I have a built-in audience. <laughs> Yo, Clown, you in the first mez? Yeah! First mez is a shift assignment. There are many assignments you can have at Radio City. You can see people in the orchestra or mezzanines. The orchestra is exciting because you get to see the show close up and see celebrities. I got to see Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Much to my surprise, I was taller than him and he was wearing shoes with a heel. Oh, and I also got to see Carol Burnett. <laughs> when I took her to her chair, I told her she was my idol and that I was gonna be a comedian just like her. And she, she said to me, oh, I feel you're gonna make it, dear. Wow. The best spot to be scheduled is the third mezzanine because you were so high up away from all management that you could be And we After the show started, you could hide and sneak a beer you scored off the bartender you've learned and with. You could disappear in the ladies' lounge, a huge art deco restroom, complete with little phone rooms. There are also back staircases that hardly anyone used. You could go missing for hours. The worst assignment at Radio City was the lobby. Basically, you are the information for hundreds of tourists wandering in asking the same questions. You had to stand your whole shift with a half hour lunch and a 15 minute break. It sucked. So now it's December and it's the Christmas show. There are five shows a day instead of two. And of course, I'm assigned the lobby. It's packed and freezing. The doors are constantly open and it smells like, like roasted chestnut. I am positioned at the perch, the spot in front of the box office where you direct the line and answer the questions. The questions are the same and they are being shouted at me from all directions. Very good. How much is ticket? Is there an intermission? Excuse me. How long is the show? Where is toilet? My 15 minute break is late because someone called in sick. My break is when I have a snack to keep from being hypoglycemic. I sound like a robot. $75, no intermission, 19 minutes. Toilets to the left. My head is pounding and I'm being backed into a corner by the tourists. How much is ticket? Is possible toilet? There's no intermission. 
I hope there's no foul language in the show. Can we bring in outside food? Can I video record the manger scene? Does the baby have to pay? Surely the baby doesn't have to pay. Does the baby have to pay? Then it happened. I snapped. Yes! Lady, you have to pay for the baby! <gasps> At that, my supervisor appears. Susan, it's time for your break. I think you need to leave the floor. Now. I did. For the next three days, I waited to get fired. I certainly deserved it. On the fourth day, I couldn't handle it anymore, so I quit. One week later, I tried to get my job back. They told me it was too late. I took it as a sign that it was time to do something different. So, I answered an ad from the back of the village voice for the psychic hotline. I called. How, so, how many years have you been a psychic? I, I mean, you are a psychic, right? I took a long pause, like I was channeling the mystics. And I said, no, but I am an actress. Well, it's a good thing they didn't hire me. I wouldn't have predicted that. That's all, folks.